In today's video, I will be going over everything stolen in Deep Woken and Rogue Lineage, the two games made by Monad Studios. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe, since only about 20% of the people watching right now are actually subscribed. Also, before we get into it, I wanted to tell you guys about Gear Up Booster. Gear Up Booster is a patching software that you can download on your PC to help improve your ping and stability in Roblox games like Deep Woken. As you can see, I'm getting a ping higher than I am without Gear Up Booster enabled. And also, this application isn't just limited to PC users. Mobile users can also enjoy the benefits of Gear Up Booster. I'm also very happy to share that this marks my third collaboration with Gear Up. The feedback from many of my viewers has been very positive. Use my link in the description and comment section down below to download Gear Up Booster today for PC, iOS, or Android. Now back to the video. Starting with Deep Woken, last time I did a video like this, someone said, those aren't stolen, they're references. Next time I hear that in the comments, I'm going to reference your full name and address for everyone to see. So don't comment that. Anyway, let's start with the weapons first. First of all, Genshin Impact. The old model for Crazy Sloth's Divine Spear was literally the Primordial Jade Wing Spear from Genshin Impact. The Divine Longsword is also modeled after the Excalibur Proto, a sword from the Fate series. And I actually still to this day don't know if Fate is a game or an anime or both. Anyway, the Rifle Spear is next, and the Rifle Spear is straight out of Bloodborne. Same name, same weapon, it's literally the same. Next would be Petra's Anchor, which is literally just- <laughs> It is May from Guilty Gear. The Railblade critical attacks are literally just ABA Rengoku's attacks, which makes sense considering Par works on both ABA and Deep Woken, and I'm pretty sure he made the Railblade. The Krulia knife is Krolo's dagger from Hunter x Hunter. The Shattered Katana is the Black Mortal Blade from Sekiro. By the way, I was once a top 70 Sekiro speedrunner sitting at the 67th position at one point. Not to flex or anything. Anyway, the old model for the Curved Blade of Winds and the aftercut ability seem to be inspired by the Wind Shear weapon from Skyrim. Also, potentially the Twin Blades, which I actually use for my light armor Skyrim build with full Stalrim armor. Anyway, the Grimorian Long Spear Critical is literally just Rogue Lineage's chain pull ability. And finally, the Storm's Eye is just the Wonder Waffle from Call of Duty. Next, let's talk about the monsters and bosses. Starting with the Sharko, literally identical to Bloodborne's Shark Giant enemy except slightly less ugly and that's only because Deep Woken has less detail. The Pteropods, although a different color, are pretty much just giant headcrabs from the Half-Life series. The angels in Deep Woken are almost definitely inspired by the angelic demons from Castlevania's anime series. They even have the same weird face covering hair hat mask things. The Kaido boss fight is a reference to Kaido from One Piece. Who knew? And I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, it's it's a reference to the, the mythological monster. Well, they both share the same color as Kaido from One Piece, and then he also has a lot of distinct features, such as his mustache. The Duke is inspired by the Accelerator from an anime which I won't even attempt to pronounce the name of. The moves he uses are also directly taken from the Accelerator's kit in ABA with applied Gale Breath effects. It's the exact same. A lot of people were telling me the Enforcer is a reference to the Kraken Cyclops from Salt and Sanctuary, but honestly, the only real similarity is black and red eye. So I don't think this is inspired unless it's very loosely inspired by Salt and Sanctuary. Which, I mean, there is a lot of Salt and Sanctuary inspiration in Deep Woken, but I just don't really think the Enforcer falls within that. The Squibbo, or formerly known as the Nautiladont, is Dagon from Jujutsu Kaisen, except he's blue. However, they could also just both be references to the humanoid form of Cthulhu. And finally, for monsters, the golem is straight out of Genshin Impact. There's no debating it, you can see it. On to Bells. Run It Back is a reference to Phoenix's ultimate from the hit video game Valorant. Portals is also a reference to Yoru from the hit game by Riot Development Valorant. Crazy Slots is a reference to the guy from Hunter x Hunter, whose ability is also called Crazy Slots. Wind Up is also a reference to Hunter x Hunter. Dimensional Travel is Kamui from Naruto, and Teleportation, also known as Flying Rajin, is Flying Rajin from Naruto. The Jar of Souls is almost absolutely a reference to the Binding of Isaac's Urn of Souls weapon. I would know because I've 100%ed this game on two different platforms, and I have over 800 total hours on the Binding of Isaac on the PC and Nintendo Switch combined. Now let's go over to Talents. 
The first talent up is called Ultra Kill, which is a gun talent. And if you couldn't tell, it's a reference to the video game Ultra Kill. The Pocket Sand talent is a reference to Tao's Pocket Sand ability from Rogue Lineage. Ardor Scream might also be a reference to Abyssal Scream from Rogue Lineage, which in itself comes from the class that is a reference to the Abyss Watchers from Dark Souls. The Vow of Mastery talents are a reference to Lelouch from Code Geass. The One-Eyed King talent is a reference to Tokyo Ghoul's One-Eyed King. The talent Boom Headshot is a reference to Team Defense Fortress 2's Crazed Gunman class. The talent known as Battle Tendency is a JoJo's reference. Miscellaneous references, starting with Suri's Quest, which is a reference to the Flower Grave quest from Hollow Knight. Special mention, but the Sigil Knight quest in Rogue Lineage is also a reference to the Flower Grave quest from Hollow Knight. The Depths is also a reference to Salt and Sanctuary, Maiden Abyss, and Gurren Lagann all at once. The Depths has a pineapple, and this pineapple under the sea is a Spongebob reference, because it is a pineapple under the sea, and Spongebob lives in one of those. The running sequence to the light hook after beating the Scion of Etheron is a reference to the entire end sequence of the Risk of Rain 2 boss Mithrix. The divers are a reference to the whistles from Maiden Abyss. All of the drowned gods are just any god from HP Lovecraft mythology, in which perception of them causes insanity and or just instant death. Also, funny little fact, but all the Genshin Impact references in the game are added in by the developer Yayafino. The golems, Yayafino's entire character is a Genshin Impact kit. Everything that is a Genshin Impact reference was entered by Yayafino. Yayafino has never played Genshin Impact. So, I'm calling you out, Yayafino. You are a fraud. I know you might be seeing this video because I know you saw one of my other ones and commented on it. So, let's see if you're going to adjust the fraud allegations and address them to see if you are truly a fraud or if you're actually a reasonable person. Time to move on to Rogue Lineage, starting with various references within classes. The entire Shinobi class is ripped from Sekiro, although it's quite poorly, and I think I know why. First of all, the Resurrection for some reason gives Fire Enchant proc and Red Eyes, even though Red Eyes in Sekiro means you're weak to fire and you can't resurrect. So it shouldn't give you either of those, especially because neither of those happen in the game. Also, the moves taken are strange because who's using Shadow Rush in Sekiro, the game I'm a top 67 speedrunner in? I really feel like they made the Shinobi class in Rogue Lineage without actually playing the game and just like loosely base it around what they saw in the game's trailer or something. Next up is Abyss Walker's Uber class, which is known as the Abyss Watcher or the Abyss Dancer, which is the Abyss Watcher, which is a Dark Souls enemy. Shura is also a reference to the Shura ending from Sekiro. Also poorly adapted, but doesn't really matter. Church Knight's helmet is also a reference to For Honor, the hit video game. Everything related to the Oni and Akuma classes are references to Street Fighter Akuma. Sekair, the Master Necromancer ability, is a Skyrim reference, along with Inferi and potentially Howler summoning because it could be like summoning a companion in Skyrim but I think that's a little bit of a stretch. The Dragon Rider class is a reference to Undyne from Undertale. You can't disagree with me, you literally get a blue spear, and all of the sound effects for that class are ripped straight from Undertale. The Wraith Helmet is a Wraith Knight Helmet from RuneScape. This was actually confirmed by Archmage a while ago. The races Dinakeri, Dizin, or if you want to be weird, Jin, Fisherin, Casperin, Navarin, and Morvid are all apparently named after chess grandmaster level players, which, little bit weird, and also, all the Azael racial names are a reference to either a demon, key of hell, Ars Goesha, or a sin. The Phoenix Down is ripped straight from Final Fantasy. They didn't change the name, it is literally just the Final Fantasy item. All of the Jester Edict is a JoJo's reference. You either have the World or King Crimson, both are JoJo's references. Also, the injury sound is also just ripped straight from League of Legends. And finally, the Construct race is straight out of the witcher i hope you guys enjoyed this video um follow me on twitch at twitch.tv slash raycontour i'm gonna start streaming again i haven't streamed in like a week and a half maybe two weeks at this point but i'm gonna make it more consistent again hope you guys like this video if i missed any references cover them in the comments down below and if i didn't miss any references which i most definitely did i just know i missed a bunch of references um uh, tell me that I'm right, even though I'm not. Um, yeah, but if I miss any references, just cover them in the 
comment section down below and you guys can discuss everything I missed. Yaya Fino, discuss the fraud allegations because we are fraud watching you from this point on. I'd also like to reiterate thank you to Gear Up Booster for sponsoring today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you guys want to see more stuff like this or maybe a part two covering some references that I missed, put some stuff down in the comment section down below on references I missed or you can call me a dumb idiot. Do whatever you want. I hope you all had an amazing day and enjoyed this video. I love you all and goodbye.